Well, we're here today with a special guest, Lanny McDonald. As uh, many of you may know, Lanny was with the Calgary Flames from 1981 to 1989, and he finished up as captain. I'll never forget Lanny watching Game 6 in Montreal, watching you win the goal in that game that won the Stanley Cup. That was your last game as a captain and player. That, uh, I'll never forget that. But you're still with hockey, now chairman of the Hockey Hall of Fame in Toronto. It seems like you can never get away from hockey, um, such as I understand you had an interesting weekend last weekend. Well, we certainly did. Uh, we were at a peewee tournament down in Salt Lake City. We played seven games, tied our first game, won six straight to win the championship. Uh, and what a thrill it was for the boys, uh, parents, siblings, uh, everyone that was at the tournament. Uh, it really uh, sent a message that if these young men worked hard and gave it everything they've got, that good things happen uh, in the end. Well, uh, I know you enjoyed that tournament really well because, uh, I, as you know, I talked to you after the tournament. I was talking at you because you'd completely lost your voice, which was quite entertaining. And uh, now you're off the bench in another battle. Can you tell me more about that? I certainly can. Uh, I was a director of uh, Birch Mountain Resources from 1995. Uh, which was a quarry to serve the oil sands. We had a billion tons of limestone reserves, 50 years lifespan, with a net present value of 1.6 billion. That's right, 1.6 billion. We needed financing, and lo and behold, enter Brookfield, who wanted to partner with us. They advertised long-term patient capital three to five years worth. They put us into receivership in just over 10 months. That's right, over 10 months. We had made a presentation to TriCap on June 27, 2008, forecasting break even for the next six months and a two million of positive cash flow by the end of the year. Same day, right after that presentation, TriCap sent a letter to ComputerShare to block the interest payment on the unsecured debenture. ComputerShare already had our check, and the funds were in the bank to cover it. In my opinion, they had no right to do so. This started a chain of events that put Birch into the event of default and the resulting receivership. Shareholders were over two-thirds Albertans lost all of their investment. Many lost their life savings. A short time after the company was taken over, the two founders, Doug Rowe, died of a brain tumor, and Don Dabbs died of a heart attack. And another of our directors, Charlie Hopper, committed suicide. My goodness. Um... I understand uh, with all of that information that the class of shareholders uh, went to court to uh, defend what Brookfield had um, presented was a uh, motion to prevent us going forward on the basis that it was frivolous and vexatious and stuff like that. So um, can you tell me what happened in that uh, preliminary motions hearing. In 2014, the Court of Queen's bench judge ruled against us in preliminary motions where all we had to do was prove there was an issue that should go to trial. Our bar was low. We didn't have to prove much. The judge dismissed all of our evidence as hearsay. All of the following data was in our evidence but ignored. We had just had a quarter of break-even, validating the forecast of the June 27th presentation. 
we were setting sales records. We had a 1.3 million ton order in the bag. And our huge EIA approval was just around the corner. You know, during the hearing, the Brookfield lawyer said, so their operations are going poorly. Does this look like our operations were going poorly? Not a chance. This graph demonstrates sales from 2006 to 2008 in millions of dollars. It looks like we are doing pretty darn good. And so, um, you uh, lost the, the motions. Um, after that, did you appeal? Well, we certainly did appeal. But in the meantime, a backup hard drive was found belonging to one of the deceased executives. It needed extensive recovery, which revealed about 400,000 files of data. The Court of Appeal has a rule that no matter how complex or simple the case is, you are given 45 minutes to argue both for the fresh evidence and to argue the actual appeal. But you are supposed to put your best foot forward at the same time. We applied for more time and the use of visual aids, but they rejected both. And as a result, we only selected 75 pieces of fresh evidence for the appeal. And so, uh, how did the appeal go? Well, the appeal was on June 15, 2016. They gave us more time, but we had planned an agenda for 45 minutes. One of the judges really seemed to understand our arguments especially when our lawyer talked about the South Hall Road Agreement that transferred some of the surface rights to Suncor, but Brookfield grabbed the $4.8 million as an asset sale. I think it was about this time that the same judge said, something smells here, or words to that effect. Then our lawyer went through how Brookfield prevented the interest payment that caused the default in the first place. Our evidence showed we had paid the interest, but Brookfield had blocked it. Another bit of evidence that really seemed to get the court's attention was an exhibit that showed Brookfield's intention was to extinguish all existing shareholders. It took six months for the appeal panel to come back to an 18-page decision rejecting our appeal and all of our fresh evidence. So after uh, that bit of bad news, um, where are you in the case now? After the judgment on December 5th, we requested a copy of the transcript. After a two-week battle, they denied our request. The hearing was open to the public and there was no sensitive issue. So in our opinion, the transcript is public record. All of the lawyers we have talked to are baffled by this denial. We have a top-notch team dedicated to justice for our shareholders. The team decided unanimously we have no option but to press on to the Supreme Court. We have filed a complaint about access to the transcript with the Canadian Judicial Council in Ottawa. We need that transcript for evidence in the application to the Supreme Court, which is our next step. We also have a petition with over 250 signatures of shareholders demanding the transcript. We have the evidence to refute many items in the judgment of the appeal panel. TriCap, Brookfield, and its predecessor, Brasscan, have taken over many companies in a similar way. There's even an article about them being called a predator. Don't think this is over. I'm off of the bench, and I'm mad as hell now. 
And as in the word of one of the judges, something really smells here. Well, thanks, Lanny. Um, that's a great interview. And uh, I think, uh, you know, we all agree that something truly smells here. It certainly does. <laughs>